So this is gonna be a touchy subject. Can we learn tactics from video games? Short answer is yes. But before you start trying to murder me on the comments, let me explain how. This is a quick peek at what we're capable of doing here at a and Design. So let's talk about neural pathways. In brief, a neural pathway is a series of connected neurons that send signals from one part of the brain to another. These connected neurons process the information that we receive, and it is them that enable us to interact as well as experience emotions and sensations. They create our memories and enable us to learn. Now, does this mean that if you play Call of Duty for 10 years, then all of a sudden you're gonna be a tactics or weapons expert? Of course not. It all depends on your specific attitude towards utilizing a medium like a video game to test and develop cognitive skills that eventually could transfer to real life. So what is cognition? Cognition is defined as the mental action or process of acquiring knowledge and understanding through thought, experience, and the senses. It is, in essence, the ability to perceive and react process and understand, store and retrieve information, make decisions and produce appropriate responses. A number of studies have shown that playing video games can lead to structural changes in the brain, including increasing the size of some regions or to functional changes such as activating the areas responsible for attention or visual spatial skills. Video games have also been proven to improve decision-making skills hand and eye coordination, problem solving, and memory. Although much like many other things in life, your attitude and specific goals set out while playing video games can most definitely make a difference between benefiting from them or end up just wasting your time. So time management is key, and we should also talk about your physical health. If you're playing video games for extended periods of time where you're not physically active and just basically end up glued to the screen and couch for 12 hours, then yes, you'll probably face negative consequences due to those habits. We have a responsibility to our community and to each other, to the welfare healthcare system, to take care of ourselves, eat halfway decent, and exercise every now and then. You know? One of the major reasons our country is going to shit is because it's unhealthy as hell. You know, the hardest thing people do each day, in most cases, step up out of bed, or to stand up off the, off the toilet. And that's sad. Sad state. Like I said, the thing about being responsible. And that's what I talk about when I talk about responsibility-based fitness. A lot of people don't understand that. And then the first time that you put kid and helmet and uh, battle belt and mags and all that good stuff, that's when, you, that's when it really hits you. You just go, wait. But yeah, too many people don't realize they, uh, the physical toll that doing these kinds of activities actually takes on your body, which is why we mentioned in the beginning of the video to become physically fit. Doing this and training for 12 hours does a lot to your body. This is why if you want to get into this, doing tactics in real life, you should also have some sort of workout plan because doing this or a specific amount of hours of the day training will get you smoke. Carrying a, a firearm on low ready and getting reps and reps and reps doing that will get your get your shoulders smoked. Just like most things, playing video games in moderation and with the proper attitude is the best way to ensure you get the most benefit out of the experience. So how does this all tie into tactics? The instructor world wants to have us believe that the definition of tactics is basically any tactical decision made that will undoubtedly result in surviving a life and death situation that exclusively is taught by a specific instructor with a specific background. But what is the actual definition of the word tactic? A tactic is an action or strategy carefully planned to achieve a specific end. Within our industry, this word has become hijacked by the instructing world that is entirely taboo for anyone to discuss if you're not a professional in the law enforcement or military circle. But based on the definition itself of the word 
tactic. It is extremely clear that tactics are not exclusive to the military or law enforcement world. Something as simple as planning a different route for you to commute to work safely can be understood as an example of a real world applied tactic. Kids playing hide and seek or tag are applying the most basic combat skills that all humans inherently know or understand subconsciously without having the education to be able to understand what it is that they're doing and why. What tends to be a little more specific to the military and law enforcement world that often is misconstrued as tactics in a broader sense could be the concept of battle drills. Things such as clearing a bunker or movement to contact are very specific to the military world and obviously do not entirely fall under the spectrum of tactics that civilians would apply in their own environment. Now, does this mean that civilians should not learn what battle drills are? Of course not. Battle drills actually have tons of parallels and important skills that when dissected and applied to a civilian environment can be extremely beneficial for the average citizen to know and understand. Let's use the nine line medevac procedure for example. In the military when a unit sustains a casualty, they are trained to return fire on the threat while also treating the casualty if possible and then reach up to higher leadership to request a medical evacuation for the casualty. Take away the operational environment in which the military operates and you could very easily identify and highlight the importance for a civilian to understand things like how to respond to an armed threat as a responsible armed citizen, how to treat an injured individual when the situation allows it, how to effectively and concisely dial 911 and provide the necessary information for the emergency dispatcher to send first responder units to your location. In essence, tactics and battle drills between the two worlds obviously differ because of the context and operational environment in which they occur. But there are a lot of universal parallels that every average American could apply to their own environment if they are able to understand the concepts and translate them from one to another. Now, how do video games fit into all of this? Now that we understand what neural pathways are and what cognition is, if the individual sets out to experience video games from a learning perspective rather than purely just entertainment context, then that's when we can use video games to accomplish learning. Now, how do we translate neural pathways and cognition learning and turn it into tangible execution. That is through application and repetition. The idea is to test those mental concepts and turn them into motor skills. So what is a motor skill? A motor skill is a learned ability to cause a predetermined movement outcome with maximum certainty. Motor learning is the relatively permanent change in the ability to perform a skill as a result of practice or experience. Performance is an act of executing a motor skill. The goal of motor skill is to optimize the ability to perform the skill at the rate of success, precision, and to reduce the energy consumption required for performance. Continuous practice of a specific motor skill will result in a greatly improved performance. So why am I making the argument that video games can help us learn tactics? In essence, while playing tactical video games, you are encountering problems and situations that require your immediate input at a rate of hundreds if not thousands per session. It is the best example of learning through trial and error. Basically, experimenting with various methods of doing something until one finds the most successful and retain it and then execute it later as part of your learned knowledge. This means that in one three hour session, you could face a multitude of situations where you can study the outcome of your actions and test prior tactics versus different ones to achieve the goal of survival or in the case of video games, just basically winning engagements. And the military actually understands this. I personally have played video games in the military. Obviously, we're talking about multi-million dollar facilities where soldiers are being fully immersed into a virtual or simulated combat environment that is in essence the very same experience that most average Americans experience from the comfort of their own homes. It's just in a different environment. And you're doing it as part of your job. My own squad had a thing where they spent time after work trying to use real life military tactics in a video game called Battlefield 4, where you had mounted and dismounted squads and they would be able to apply the same tactics that we would use like in gunnery with our Bradley fighting vehicles in a video game. 
But before we continue talking about video games, we have to talk about the elephant in the room, which is the word tactics. Why is there such a taboo when it comes to openly discussing tactics, particularly for civilians, amongst each other and teaching it to each other? And that's because being able to tell anyone that tactics aren't this crazy, complicated set of rules that only a very select few have, and acquiring them from other sources outside of that circle is somehow a threat to the training industry or a danger to yourself and others. As cutthroat as it is, the training industry has a real ego problem. Too many instructors walk around thinking and expressing that the methods and concepts that they teach are the undoubtedly most irrefutable system to survive a life and death situation. Now, I will admit that there are too many of them teaching wildly unsafe practices and they should be criticized in an open forum as we tend to do in the community as it is. In essence, violence is something that is not entirely exclusive to the military and law enforcement world. Take a grandma, for example, that fights a home break-in. And I say, you reach for my door, I'm gonna shoot you. She did, struck him in the stomach. Let's say this break-in happens and she selects a hasty fighting position where she is funneling down a hallway and then she sees her threat and engages with that revolver. That grandma right there is applying tactics, natural, instinctive, guttural from within herself, from within our own DNA, natural instinct of self-preservation. And that grandma right there is walking around with more combat experience than 80% of the military. And we're talking an actual target on her sights that she actively engaged on and not this whole farmer shoots at you from 700 meters away and then you return fire in the general area and then call for air support and that's your war story. We're talking about a clear sight picture and trigger squeeze and follow up shots on that target. So this is why I believe that civilians and us military and law enforcement should be able to have these conversations together because sure, in the military we experience violence in a very different context and law enforcement experience violence in an incredibly much different context. But civilians can also experience violence and simply by carrying a gun every single day, you are building operational experience because we're talking about what we mentioned before, the concept of trial and error. Every single time that you holster up a weapon and you conceal it, throughout the years, you're walking through life, developing that operational experience that allows you to know what feels good, what doesn't, and how to prepare yourself for a life or death situation, hopefully. But the taboo behind tactics, we'll leave that for another video that I'm working on. Let's get back into video games. I will give you a personal example of something I always understood as a concept in my operational environment in the military that I actively executed consistently, but that video games continue to help me drill it in my head and focus on it more based on iterations and all out repetitions. And that's tactical magazine changes. I always understood the concept and like I said, I executed it in my operational environment within the military, but it wasn't until I noticed that during gaming sessions, I would completely disregard these concepts and would catch myself continuously running around with my character, emptying a magazine on a target and be left with two or three rounds running around only to find my next target and fire those two to three rounds and reach bolt lock and then end up being killed because of it. You know, put your sights on, engage your targets. You know, we're considering here, cover, mag change. So there we go. You can highlight there that when I ran into this guy that I shot right here, I totally forgot to do a tactical magazine chain. So when I approach this threat right here, I started shooting, and then guess what? Ran out of ammo. Really full. Now there's the importance of clearing your corners. I went through this threshold a little bit fast, might I add. And as I turned, there were three dudes conveniently located there. And I think I'm Tactical magazine right there. Perfect example. Uh, yeah, that's us. Three dudes for getting to do tactical magazine change and then getting as a result. This is why it's important to do this. 
also, I'm, I'm also like somewhat distracted because I'm talking while I'm playing. But it's good to highlight because I see my failures and I call myself out on them because it's important. That's the mindset that I try to have when I play this game. I try to put myself in a situation where it's like, if I die once, then this means I died in real life. I do not want that. Tactical magazine change. How how long was I walking and talking right now without doing a tactical magazine change? Again, this is the thing that I struggle with the most. Now, this was mostly due to me just wanting to shut my brain off and just play the game for entertainment purposes. But as much as I wanted to relax and have fun, I also wanted to win. So I made it a point that after every engagement, I do a tactical magazine change within reason to try and be more effective at the game. But deep down, I was actually applying real world tactics into the video game because after you enter and clear a room and you fire a specific amount of rounds, doctrine tells us that if the situation allows, it is always good to top off your magazine so that way if you run into your next target, you have 30 rounds ready to be able to engage your next target. Approaching this area, dead body on the ground, now let's check. Do mag, pack mag, do that. Tag mag before we go into the next room. What it boils down to is that most tactics are just common sense. I noticed that it took me a little bit to get used to the higher level of awareness needed to play the game with full concentration, but now it's just muscle memory. Little things like this happen to all of us thousands of times a month, and we don't really notice. If we dissect the style of play of a lot of players, you can clearly see widely known real life tactics being utilized by kids and average Americans who have no idea what techniques and tactics they're using. It just feels natural for them, and they have achieved that level of operational experience within the game to understand those concepts. But through application within the video game, they see what works and what doesn't. Therefore, we have to say that once the mechanics of weapons handling are understood, then tactics are mostly based out of common sense. To see eight-year-olds solving complex problems while doing meticulous room clearing is rather amazing to see. Never oh, lost yeah. Yo, okay, hey, hey, cover. Hope I don't get rushed. Okay, teammate went in. He went left. I go right. Security. Basics. Basic shit right there. So the idea of illustrating concepts to someone and allowing them to test them in real life through trial and error allows them to make the necessary connections in their brain to then once introduced to the mechanics aspect of the activity, they would be at a significant advantage compared to someone who's never had to solve those problems and have that extensive amount of experience in the process of trial and error that you adopt from playing video games. So with the right attitude, understanding basic tactics and applying them in video games can most definitely eventually translate into real life performance if the learned concepts are supported through a physical application that isolates fundamentals to then reach muscle memory. This is why you can play chess against the computer and then be able to play a human being because it's literally the same concept. It's just that the stakes in a real world life and death situation are obviously higher. And so based on my time in the military and the education that I have pursued outside of the military, I have identified a set of warrior skills. Let's call them warrior skills because some of them come from the army manual warrior skills level one. These are concepts that you can actually put into practice in a video game and through thousands of iterations and repetitions, you can ingrain those concepts into your brain and then eventually transfer them into motor skills in real life. Now, I should add that in order to transfer those concepts and skills into motor skills, you should obviously seek good training, right? And this is where those instructors that I talked about before come in handy. You ever done any CQB? Not really. All right, so basically in CQB, you got lead guys and dudes that are behind them, all right? So if you're my lead guy, all right, as the number one man, yeah, I'm going to be low ready. I'm going through the house. I'm ready as fuck. But as the number two man, I never know which way my number one man is going to go because he can go anywhere he wants. He's always right. Even when he's wrong, he's still right. Well, right here, man, as opposed to, right? So just take a few steps. And then kind of dig left or right. All right. All right. No matter which way he goes, I can always drop my gun right down over his shoulder. All right. So in the stack, right, in CQB and stuff, 
I run high ready all the time. Because they are the perfect people to pick their brain and learn from because they have done these sorts of things in real life. Because a lot of these guys are wearing play, play carriers. So sometimes you'll get two rounds and then you finish them off in the head. That's where the, the failure drill comes from. Type of thing. Um, I mean, that in itself is a, a something that's very natural. And when you do force on force, um, we actually have a video that we're going to post soon where we're going to talk about that, where you inherently aim lower when you have a threat that's actively engaging you because you're so you're threat focused. So what you tend to do is people tend to shoot pelvic shots and then start stitching up the target until they make it to the head. Hopefully that is something that does happen in real life because you're so threat focused that you're going, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, there's a person there and they're holding a gun and they're about to shoot you, that you inherently lower your presentation of your firearm. It happens with pistol and it happens with rifle. So if you play video games and read textbooks such as Ranger Handbook, Warrior Skills Level 1, many more military handbooks that teach these kinds of things, because they're all out there. You can Google tactics from our military and all those publications are widely open for anyone to learn and read about. What I would suggest is treat it with caution, of course, because once you transfer those concepts into the real world, you want to have professional supervision. So that way, when you're handling real firearms, no one gets hurt. But being able to grab your buddies and do some room clearing and try to understand angles, how to pie a corner, how to do a magazine change behind cover and come out of a different place that you went into cover after that magazine change. A bit. Oh, he stopped. Went into prone. Took cover. Maybe I can... There we go. So this right there highlights why it's so important to come out of a different place of cover from the same place that you went into cover. So that guy right there went into prone. I saw him go into cover got back up in the same exact area and I was able to pick him off. This is a situation that would realistically happen in real life. These are all things that you can do in a video game and then eventually grab someone that understands these concepts and then show them how to do it on an actual weapon system and they should be able to pick it up like that. So some of those basic warrior skills that you can put into practice on video games, obviously engaging targets with your primary weapon. Uh, there's no way to get into the... Oh, oh there we go. All right. All right. There we go. We were getting low on ammo again. Something that most games focus on. That's your primary duty. Employing hand grenades. There are some video games where you can actually cook off the hand grenade. And on military manuals, they actually explain to you the time that it takes for you to be able to cook a hand grenade. Now, in the military, you actually learn the proper pose, performing exterior movement techniques during an urban operation. Let's say you're playing Insurgency Sandstorm and you're trying to move as a team. That's another one. How to move as a team from the place where you spawn. How will you move as a team from there to the objective that you're trying to capture? Will you use formations, formation fundamentals and movement techniques? You can practice those on video games and notice the, the real use and application for them as you engage targets in that simulated combat environment. So the difference between walking as a wedge or a file and then setting up a line to engage your objective with suppressive fire. Or if you have more than one team, you can even try to apply Battle Drill 1 Alpha. These are all fundamentals that you can practice as a concept in the video game. And then you can grab your buddies and go in the woods and just do this thing. That's all it takes. You're trying to learn angles, positions of cover. In video games, whenever you are engaged by an enemy force in a video game and you have to select a hasty fighting position, that's, that's a fundamental. That's a, that's a war fighting fundamental that you have to learn. It's a basic warrior skill. You take contact and then you have to get down and find your next best place of cover. How to react to indirect fire while dismounted. Communication. So here's a great example of why you need team communication and understand what you're doing together. Like, look at my teammate. He just crosses my field of fire and gets absolutely fratricided. Ideally, you should have had someone on the left keeping security from here and not cross in the middle like a wild man. So that guy got shot in the back of the head because you have people here trying to pull security in the middle. So you ideally should have been, one person should have been on the left, someone else should have been aware 
to the right of your teammates. And if you want it to cross, then you can communicate them that. So that way you don't end up getting shot in the back of the head like that dude. So over here, we're going to utilize cover on the left side. Give that guy some love. Now my teammate there to the left basically allows me to pursue penetrating deeper into this area because I know that he has my left and I should cover his right. So this is as far as I want to go without exposing myself. Learning that we capture the objective, I try to find a strong wall where I can watch everything and basically align my sector of fire so that way I have, so I have the best view on, on most avenues of approach. And now if you thought the first fratricide incident was funny, What's going to happen next is going to blow your mind. So this is my sector of fire. This is what I'm responsible for. Right here is another example of fratricide. Why would you have a teammate just blindly walk in front of your sector of fire and then just get smoked in the back of the head? And I did this on purpose to illustrate that point. He should have had enough situational awareness to see what I am doing and what my sector of fire is and not walk in front of it and then get shot in the back of the head while I'm trying to take care of an active threat. Gotta make sure nobody comes up here and surprises me. Oh. I almost committed fratricide there. That's why it's so important to understand where your team is and what they're doing. Because that guy just on the window there surprised the fuck out of me and I almost shot him. I legitimately, my trigger finger went, oof, almost flinched and shot him in the back. That is the biggest thing that video games help people with and that I particularly use because obviously you can tell by the accent. I, I was raised in a foreign country. So... For me, tactical communication is, is one of my weakest points, and it's something that I try my hardest to get better at every day. When I was a contractor for the Air Force, I noticed that I did not train verbalizing commands and, and really connecting this with this as much as I should have. And whenever we did these force on force scenarios, whenever I would have to apprehend someone and, and perform my security officer duties as a contractor, it was very easy to tell, right? I would go to the range, qualify expert, that's all fine and great, but what happens if you don't have to shoot? How are you going to control that situation properly? And this is why video games come in handy because I can log in with my buddies and all of a sudden start practicing the three Ds. Distance, direction, and description. Even though it sounds silly because we're playing a video game, we're trying not to be too tactical and take it too seriously. It helps. I see contact, two males, 200 meters. They're moving north. Oh. Oh. Work left. Cam? Quick peek, quick peek. Yeah. No trap. Copy. Throwing it. Open right, taking right, right clear. Left, going left. I hear a bomb. Bomb, work right, work left. Copy. I see a trap on this door. Going explosive. No trap. Charge Oops. is set. Breaching in. You have three, control. Two, one. Going. Right clear. Bomb on the left. Window right. Bathroom clear. Room clear. There's a trap on this door. This right here? Ooh, good call. Ice. Can we disarm? Trying? No, it's on the other side. Going explosive. You got it? Look, let's go. Charge good. set. Stack. Send it. I have control breaching in three. Got a car by backup. One. Door closed left and front. Or no, metal door, throwing it. Drop your weapon. Gun, gun, gun. He's down. Moving. Move clear. Door. We're reaching our side. Okay, Copy. He closed it. Throwing it. Oh, fuck. Lock. Jesus, fuck. Sending a sit rep, a situation report. Are you conducting reconnaissance on an objective and relaying to your team what you're seeing? Hey guys, they're trying to capture the point through the left side, through the garage, whatever. Some of these games, you actually have to render aid to some, some of your buddies that are down, right? So if someone goes down, how do you approach dealing with the active threats that exist in the environment and then go and basically perform buddy aid on your teammate that's on the ground? Right. What? Gimme, give gimme, give gimme, give gimme, gimme, gimme! Jim, Come on! Oh my god. 
while maintaining situational awareness. These are very, very complex situations that video games put you in. You don't really think about, but if you were to do it in real life in a force on force class where someone all of a sudden takes a round to the thigh and you have to apply a tourniquet, then at that point, it would open your eyes to see this is how it's done in real life. You try to connect the two. Maybe it would shock you, maybe you would freeze, maybe you would not be able to pull it off. But after you're done with that class, you can look back and say, well, this is how I do it in Call of Duty. Why did I not do it in a force on force scenario and in, in a simulated environment in real life? And that is because you know the concept, you just don't know the motor skills to apply them in real life. And this is why repetition and iterations of good motor skill practice are key for you to be able to execute those concepts in real life rather than just the video game. You can perform surveillance without the aid of an electronic device. You can identify combatant and non-combatant personnel in hybrid threat. That is something that when I play Ghost Recon, you have to approach an objective that has civilians in them. Watch your fire. We don't want to hit any civilians. You have to be very careful about engaging your threats because those civilians, if you shoot enough of them, commit war crimes, the game actually will tell you it's game over. I'm shooting these fucking fire. Civilian down. The lieutenant's on the run. We got a problem. Cartel soldiers incoming. That. Uh. That never feels good. The game does not want you, the game expects you to target discrimination skills in order for you to not shoot innocent bystanders. So they're basically pushing you to think hard and be extremely careful with how you engage targets in this video game. And to a lot of people, this may be annoying because they just want to shoot bad dudes. But when you really dissect it, it is an extremely important skill because in real life, you actually do have to do that. You actually have to be careful about innocent bystanders and your, and your, your backdrops when you're engaging a target, crossing linear danger areas like streets and such. So I'm out in the open. I'm actually in a linear danger area. I don't want to do that. Cover. Standing is so something not to do. Standing out there in the middle of nowhere, right here. You standing here, engaging a guy there, or these guys here. Like, why would you do that? Terrible idea. Are you walking around out in the open, completely exposed for the enemy to just target you and shoot you from however far? Do you have to break contact? It's a really terrible situation to be in. I would argue that breaking contact would probably be better, but this place is packed with bad dudes. There's too many dudes in the room and I'm by myself. I need to break contact. Understand your environment. Where's my next place of cover? There are bad dudes outside too. But, hey, I just broke contact from that area. I just saved myself and moved to a more advantageous position. Is the fire that you're taking from the enemy significant enough that it's pushing your team to break contact from that engagement or force you to flank to find a more advantageous position? Flanking. You can practice flanking in Ghost Recon Wildlands specifically is a really good game to practice that because wherever you take fire from the enemy, they will be fixated into that position. So if you use cover and concealment properly to maneuver on the enemy, they will actually try to maneuver on the last position where they saw you and you will be able to use actual flanking techniques on those enemies yeah so ideally you would not want to run into this many dudes with just a fire team but just for the purpose of uh illustrating let's get their attention and then just maneuver on them so let's see what happens actually let's take out the machine gunner because he's the one that's you know he's the one that has the most casualty producing weapon so let's see if we can take him out. He's down. All right, cool. He didn't hear it, so let's make a mistake and just, like, shoot, but not kill anybody. Just alarm them. All right, cool. Now they're looking for us. What are we What are we situated as? It looks like we're kind of in a fucked up wedge. No way. But they saw, they saw that they're getting shot at, but they haven't seen us yet. That's why I like this game, because it's accurate. You know, like, if you're, you're staying concealed and you shoot people... They can tell that you're shooting them, but they don't know where. So that's cool. Okay, now we see that we're getting in these guys moving towards us. Hey, they're about to see us. They're, mo they're mobilizing towards us. We can engage. Now, at this point, we do 
probably like what is it the australian peel or whatever the fuck you want to call it you can peel to the side to try and get a flanking position on them and they should be fixated on our last position so we probably will come probably should be able to surprise them because they're, they're expecting us to be in a line from where we were so as you can yeah there you can you can see them see they're trying to find us trying to find us over there yeah and now we're mo mobilizing to flank them right so this guy has no idea that we're just i'm just completely flanking him look very simple flanking technique happens all the time see uh, let, let's send up the drone so you can so we can see what they're doing yep they went all the way to where we were trying to find us they have no idea that now we're here they have no idea we're mobilizing to flank them so we started from here so we landed there landed here laid down in a prone kind of in a wedge formation gave them a little bit of contact they reacted they started pushing forward towards us which is really dumb and then we began to um, flank from the left so they ended up making it all the way to where we were didn't find anything and as we were moving towards this little rocky side started taking everyone out from from the side and it worked. So what I want you to walk away from this video is simply this. Take video games as a learning tool. It all depends on your attitude and the goals that you set out to achieve when you play these video games that will make a difference on whether they are beneficial for you and you end up coming out of that experience learning something or not because they can be very detrimental to your life if you abuse it just like anything utilizing video games as a learning and teaching tool is a very valid way to illustrate these concepts for people so that way they can learn it practice it retain it and then through safe and supervised motor skill practice they can learn to transfer those neural pathway and cognitive skills into real life world application but yeah plus they're pretty fun too